Alright people, it's time for the last liminality OVA, and I know what you're thinking. Why the hell am I still bothering with the OVAs, even with all of this over, as it didn't seem like they actually did anything? It's because these people matter, damn it! One of the core principles of .hack is that it is about people and how their connections affect others. In this case, how could Sumi Tominari's condition affected his prospective girlfriend Mai, his friends Yuki and Kyoko, and how his coma incident helped Jun's investigation, and what was going wrong with the world once CC Corp locked him out. And there's also one more major reason why these people are important, but I'm getting ahead of myself. What are they doing, and when is this? Well, the date is December 24th, the night of the final battle with Corbinic. Wait a second. Really? You're going with the Jesus religious symbolism? Admittedly, if you really wanted to go the Jesus route, you would have set this around the time of the Fable Resurrection, but considering this is Japan and the Christian religion remains a minority despite the assimilation of Christmas and a bunch of Western customs, I would not be surprised if this was intentional. Another thing that's odd to me, what the hell are these three schoolgirls doing out with an old man on Christmas Eve? What did their parents think they were up to? Yeah, they're having dinner on a barge, apparently that's a thing, while waiting for Ichiro so they can head out, but I would think they would have a tough time explaining why they aren't with their parents when family is one of the major themes of the modern holiday. Ichiro arrives with another boat to pick Jun and the girls up, Ichiro expositing that the rest of the team is setting up for the final engagement as they speak. And he also mentions Morgana and her role in all this with respect to trying to keep the ultimate AI from being born. Again, it's my problem with this part of the franchise that the true enemy remained faceless to the last. Anyways, there's supposition on what Morgana was actually meant to do that allowed her to trap people in the game, and it all leads back to the phases. Each were born out of character data analysis embedded into each created player, meant to monitor the player's actions in order to develop the ultimate AI aura. Using these codes against the players is what allowed her to latch on and trap them in the first place, as since they aren't AI, they aren't meant to exist within the game. Anyways, they dock at the shore of a server complex, intending to co-op the servers there in the event things go bad. Why did they come by sea? Well, with all the system malfunctions that have run rampant since Morgana went rampant, it figures that the security by sea would be the most lax, thus allowing for the most time to infiltrate before security comes by to check the building. Oh, and Yuki is being a little bratlet this entire time. Ichiro hacks the door and the group finds the main server control room, letting Jun get to work. Yuki is sent on an errand to avoid annoying those working, while Ichiro stands lookout for the expected security agents. And while he skillfully avoids being seen, Yuki almost gives them away by coming to the lobby with an offering of canned coffee. Yes, they really do sell canned coffee and vending machines in Japan. It's surprising what goes into vending machines there. Yuki's stupidity here doesn't quite give them away, but things go bad when the security personnel check the activity logs for the building, and find a record of someone using the vending machine, thus prompting the security agents to call in for backup. Jun finishes installing his program to take over the backup servers, my logging in with a spare headset to listen for the sound. However, Jun can't manage to connect. Morgana's work, most likely. In the meantime, Kyoko, Yuki, and Ichiro endeavored to keep the guards away from the control room, pulling a variety of stunts you would expect from Looney Tunes. They involve blocking the doors with junk, fire extinguishers, and slapstick. Eventually, the guards just have enough of it and make for the control room, on the hunch that they are just not but a distraction. With Jun, he manages to form a workaround to being locked out, cloning the server to remove Morgana's blocks, but the time to shift them over must be exact. And so, it's up to Mai to observe the battle, and that's when the time is right. You will remember last time in the battle with Corbinic when the servers were so overloaded they risked crashing the entire systems, and despite how the servers burning out, the battle could still continue to its conclusion, well, the reason lies right here. It is this group of people that saved the servers, saved the battle, and allowed the fight to go on to the deciding blow. It is because of Katsumi going into a coma, of his connections to these people, and because Jun didn't give up his investigation when he was thrown out of CC Corp, and that Helba had enough faith in them that he sent Ichiro to act as their contact, that Kite could win against the last phase, and that Aura could restore the system, and thus save everyone. The guards make it to the control room and capture Ichiro, while Jun and Mai went out the back, saving Yuki from the other guards, at least in part. Jun is pummeled into the ground, and the girls escape to the barge, the last guard following them, falling over the side. Later, as snow falls, Jun gets out of the security office. Ichiro having passed off their intrusion is merely being that of a security consulting firm, thus getting them off scot-free. Though their equipment was confiscated, Jun happened to sneak a high-compression data chip on his person out, 
holding more than enough evidence of their theories to go to the authorities and get CC Corp in trouble for everything they've hidden. And though it might not seem later that anything came of it, there are signs that it did. You remember last video I mentioned CC Corp's legal troubles and the disbanding of the World Network Commission? Both of these events are the repercussions of the actions of these people and the evidence they brought to bear, however unbelievable it might have seemed. That's why these people were important. Though Kaiden crew may have been stopping Morgana in the game, they didn't do it alone. There were always unseen people whose acts were affecting things, even though we could not see them within the confines of the games presented. The OVAs allowed for character studies of these people, and provided backstory elements for the reality of this world. Some of it is mythos, some of it was time-wasting. Hell, a lot of it was time-wasting. You could have cut Yuki or OVA entirely and not lost a major plot piece. The Trimagistus' act provided the last pieces of the puzzle, and it came down to Mai to time exactly when Critical Collapse was irreversible, and hit the key that saved the battle. Taking out the last phase was a team effort, and in this case, everyone did pull through. So naturally, with everyone recovered, Morgana gone, and Aura now fully manifested, it's time to party! And that party is the focus of the last story directly part of IMUX events. Dot hack signs, final OVA! Dot hack unison. It's